everybody welcome back to my channel I did promise that I was going to do another backyard imaging video the weather is glorious today so I'm going to start getting set up ready for this evening and once again I'm inviting you to join me on my imaging session if you like what you see don't forget to hit like subscribe and the bell and this is what I mean by glorious, not a cloud to be seen. It's just a light breeze, not as windy as previous. Oh, there's the lesser spotted astronome. <laughs> um, my mount's been covered up with the Telegizmo 365 cover. I'll do a review on that at a later date. But yeah, absolutely stunning weather. So let's get set up. Before we go any further, let's talk about the pier because everybody asks about this pier. So I found the design for this pier, which is called a Todd Morden pier um, from Stargazers Lounge. And I followed the instructions and it got me a pier for, a, you know, it cost me to build, including the pier plate, about £150. And it's absolutely transformed my setup time. And my enjoyment of astronomy and astrophotography a lot of people worry that it's not stable but I've got two dense concrete blocks and they're concrete not um, cinder blocks they're two different things and each block is bolted to the next so you've got four m10 bolts and then the bottom one you can't see because the grass is actually grown over that's bolted into a big chunk of concrete that's in the ground and it's been in a year now and I've not had any issues or movement so yeah I love this pier the pier plate was from Altair Astro and yeah it's like a multi-fitment so one side was like HEQ5 and when I got the EQ6 I just had to flip it over um, I used anchor bolts and I cement resin them in and yeah that is absolutely solid and as you can see I put like bolts underneath so I can use it as a bit of a leveling mechanism and then you can just see it maybe I put an M12 piece of threaded rod and that goes through the centre and he's got a wing nut underneath to hold the EQ6 even more and then just for a bit of security I um, added a bit of a lock and you know you, the uh, these I joke about these holes in the blocks it's good for securing that lock and it's actually like an inbuilt drinks um, beer holder or you know if you want to put any accessories I say it's like an inbuilt accessory tray but yeah that's the pier and I love it People have already uh, also asked about the mini PC I use. It's a Mini X Neo Z834 Windows 10. One new change is today I'm going to be using a different camera which is the Altair 183M ProTech and this is like one of my first sessions shooting mono I, I did test the camera out last night and tonight I'm going to um, get some more luminance data and for my luminance filter I'm going to use the Skytech L Pro Max questions about the focus of being upside down as well it's purely for balancing issue uh, balancing reasons I can still focus it no problem um, I haven't put the focus cube back on there yet it just looks wrong to me 
but I can still see like my measurement sort of um, markings on this side and I've still got access absolutely fine so yeah it yeah I don't like it because it looks wrong but yeah it works so if you can and you're having focus focus it balancing issues rather try putting your focus upside down And now, we wait. Here comes the full moon. That is literally going to cause chaos for my imaging tonight. Wow, that's pretty bright. There's Venus. So I'm just going to get focused up using my 3D printed Batonov mask. Okay, so I'm just going to zoom to auto and ah. There's my star that I want to use. You can see with um, the mono camera, my exposure factors are a lot shorter because the mono camera is so much more sensitive than a colour one. Awesome. Now I'm going to take that baton off mask off before I forget. There we go. And then zoom back out. Okay, so I've just patched into my mini PC and I'm going to start up astrophotography tool and PhD2 and turn on sort of tracking on, on the mount etc. Probably just heard the camera kick into life. Gain 400 and I'm going to start cooling it down unpark the mount and turn on track and let's open up PhD2 as well. Yeah. 
I'm one of these people who hates installing updates because every time I install an update it breaks something so somebody please tell me that version 2.6.8 is working okay <laughs> um, and if it is I might risk updating it soon <laughs> There we go, we're looping. It's still quite, it's not totally dark yet, so just reduce that exposure down just a touch. This will probably, well, to be honest, the moon's so bright tonight that I, I'm not really going to use this as a proper deep imaging session. I'm just using it to get used to my new camera. Um, shot a few subs on Messier 101 last night so I'll probably get grab a few more tonight and I'll show you the uh, end product of the uh, luminance subs that I've captured APT is still cooling the camera down so I'll fast forward this bit <laughs> camera's still cooling we're at sort of nearly minus six degrees so while we're waiting to do that I said last night I took a few luminance subs on um, M101 which is the pinwheel galaxy and let me just try and find those images Cold hands. <laughs> it's gone the other way. Ah, there we go. So I'm going to show you the magic of plate solving. My mount is still in the park position. So I'm going to look, double click on my image to load it up into the main viewer. A little bit slow because I'm, I'm working over the Wi-Fi and then I'm going to go to gear point craft and I know what target it is so I'm going to give Astap a clue to where where I am and I'm just going to put Messier 101 click OK just check I put that incorrect Pinwheel Galaxy and then I'm going to click blind let's see how quick it can solve It took 26 seconds last night and to be fair that's the longest it's ever taken me um, so I'm still in the park position so I'm going to put the, I want my target sent to the FOV at position which is solved and then I'm going to click go to plus plus so what happens now is the telescope will move take images and keep moving until it centers itself on M101 If I hit go to plus plus, Okay, so 
forget everything I said about go to plus plus tonight it decided not to work um I've been using this software now for a couple of years and it's never not worked like it should um that's something I'm going to need to investigate when I'm you know possibly over the weekend or something but I am centered on target I had to take images sync manually and then move till I was pretty much satisfied where I was pointing um, astrophotography is one of those really amazing hobbies that when everything's working it's fantastic and when everything well when something goes wrong it's like whoa especially when clear nights are a premium in the UK it can be really really annoying but hey ho um, onwards let's start an imaging run so computer's running a little bit slow because I'm on the Wi-Fi I'm just going to edit my plan I'm going to do 240 second exposures and I'm just going to update click OK and let's start the guiding off prefer that star instead <laughs> so I'm just going to make sure the guiding is okay first before I start imaging I am not one of these people who get hung up on the graph I like to see a smooth graph but as long as my numbers are okay you know I'm pleased to let it continue and as long as my stars are around which is the main important thing and you know the full width half maximum is kept as small as possible Okay, I'm going to start imaging. The guiding settled down, which is pretty much as I expected. Good times.